This Retina 2A camera was apparently given to the current owner by his grandfather sometime in the late 60s. And apparently it wasn't working particularly well in cold weather at that stage and eventually it was relegated to the basement and it's lived in the basement ever since. So it's not in a stunning condition. So I think we'll call this one the basement dweller. So I'm going to take it apart. Now I'm a bit cautious about this one. I expect that there'll be a bit of corrosion. And I'm equally cautious about the state of the frame counter spring, which may or may not be good. So I'm not going to test that film advance. And the lever seems to be quite stiff. And the screw head there has got a nasty, dull, corroded look about it. So things might not be good in here. So I'll start stripping this lot down, separating the pieces for the cleaner and the pieces that I'll be cleaning manually. The frame counter spring there is present. It looks to me like a repair. It appears to be two pieces. But it is currently present, somewhat corroded as you can probably see there, but it's uh, a useful thing to have. Let's carry on taking this thing apart. I honestly don't know uh, what state all this will be in. A little bit of rust there on that wavy washer. It looks like a camera and that's a head start I suppose. Some of the things that reach my repair bench have ceased to look much like a camera. It's the top cover off. A little bit of corrosion visible there. It's not too bad. A bit of rust visible on the screws here. Let's start removing things. Remove the shutter release and before I do that I'm just checking to see if there's a spacer washer present on there. There isn't. That's good. It means that I won't uh, have to hunt for it. So it looks like the frame counter had been repaired at one stage, the frame counter spring had been repaired rather than being replaced. I wouldn't have thought that 50 years ago it was particularly hard to get replacement parts for that, so that's interesting in itself. I'll just have a quick look at this rangefinder. You know, it's very sticky, it doesn't return to the rest position. But optically it's not bad, you can actually see through it. Let's have the uh, rewind off. And hook that spring. The springs I don't put through the ultrasonic cleaner, there's no point, and uh, they're only likely to get lost or damaged. I'll just pull this cock. Oh, the mechanism is very gummed up.
I'm just cocking that so that I can get it that screw there. Can come off. There should be a spring under there. Here it is. Pop that to one side. Well, so far I haven't seen anything catastrophic. That screw was loose. Three screws hold the top bush for the film advance shaft. Remove the clutch assembly if it'll come out. Let me just gun it in place. Oh, yeah, it's uh, pretty reluctant to come out. That's the top of the camera dealt with. Let's deal with the base of the camera. So these two screws from the tripod socket surround need to come out. So I need to peel the leather back at the base of the camera. And on the Retina 2A and 1A cameras, this boss at the other end was inserted and fitted after the leather. So the leather will not peel off over that. Don't bother trying to fight down to that stage because it won't do you any good. I peel the leather back to about this point. That's good enough. The covering on the Retina 2As was leather, not leatherette. That's brittle there, that cracked. Typically leather is quite uh, robust. Much more so than leatherette. Leatherette would have had its attractions to the manufacturers because undoubtedly it was cheaper and it was exceptionally consistent with its quality. Whereas leather, being a, a natural product, Tends to be a bit variable. It very probably has a tendency to shrink or expand depending on moisture content more than leatherettes would have done when leatherettes were new. When leatherettes are 60 years old, that's a different proposition. I've got a screw here I need to get out that holds the struts in for the uh, front standard. But if you adjust to peel the leather back to that point, when you glue it back you'd end up with a line across here, quite visible. So taking the leather all the way back to this point pushes your line back to this point where it's very unobtrusive by comparison. Yes, leather's dry, a bit stiff and 
probably delaminating. That's probably far enough for my purposes. So, two brass screws here. Which are there to promote size bump growth. And you can just see a bump there and there. Tripod socket screws. They're neither unusually loose or unusually tight. Means that the camera probably didn't suffer a lot of abuse on the tripod. I want a tool to get that rewind button off. Yeah. Take that screw out. Take out the sprocket shaft and the sprocket. This is the latch for the rewind button. Three screws here. Bush from the base of the film in front, the take up spool rather. That deals with what needs to come off the body directly. Let's take the door off the front. Hinge pin screw top and bottom. There may be one or more spacer washers between the door and the frame. There's one at the top. There's another one that was at the bottom. Alright, if I stretch this door out, I can lift it off that out of the slot. There are two cartridge paper washers. Move those now so they don't get lost. That screw was from the bottom of the film advance. I've got to remove the shutter and lens assembly next. I'll try this tool. This is one from Mr. Beljan, he no longer makes them.
and I just need an assistant on the end of that to get that loose. very tight. I don't want the tool to slip. That's it. Let's retrieve that right. Just have to retaining ring and put that in the shutter assembly aside. The lens looks exceptionally dirty. It's unknown whether that'll clean well or not. It's got a real cataract look about it at the moment. Pop that to one side. Continue with the body. Got the arm for the rangefinder coupling. Undo that screw at the top. two screws on the front. Lift that out, put it to one side. I want to mark the position of my focus helical here. That's actually moves quite smoothly. That's amazing. Very unexpected. Anyway, I need to mark the position of this so that everything goes back in the same relative position. I need to mark the position of the focus scale ring with the outer helical. I put two scratches at the bottom, one at the top typically. And then I'll mark the relative position. I did that wrong. I've marked the inner helical there. I didn't, didn't want to do that. Just put a couple of cancel lines through that. I will mark the relative position of the inner and outer helical. Once I've got the mount of this mount, and I usually do that when I have them turned so that the inner and outer, the front surfaces are dead level with each other. So with six screws hold the front retainer ring in place. They're very small, very sticky, inclined to get lost, so try and make sure they don't get away. The inner and outer helical, and I'll just turn those till they are level with each other across the front surface. Which is about there. And those marks I'd made on the outer helical, I'll now continue them across. Now I can reassemble them and get them back in the correct positions relative to each other. Four black screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. The bellows will probably pull back into the body after this. That one's tight. If they're tight, that usually indicates corrosion.
four screws hold the focus mount to the back of the front standard. Remove the front standard and see that grease is pretty nasty. Cover those screws. Two screws hold the shroud on the front of that gear. That gear cocks the shutter. And that shroud doesn't go through the ultrasonic clean because that would only clean out the green paint that was on the numbers. All right, four screws hold the struts in place. One at the top. One at the bottom. That's loose. Two in the film cassette well. They really come loose without a thump. But one of them did. The other one will need the usual humour treatment. Which I'll do will take. That's that, they can come out. To return spring for the shutter release mechanism. The shaft that runs through from the back of the camera to cock the shutter. A little bracket that holds that shaft in place. And a spacer washer from the base of the camera in the same relative position as that bracket at the top. And that's all these things stripped down and ready to be cleaned. This camera back is very rough. I think I'll have to do some magic on that to, uh, before we put that back on the camera. Terrible corrosion in here and of course bumps. Well as you can see the camera back looks a little bit happier now. It's got paint. The leather looks a lot better without its bumps. The scars are a permanent feature really once that leather has been stretched right out to make those Zeiss bumps. It's never going to lie dead flat again. But that looks a lot better than it once did. So that'll do for a start. I can carry on assembling this camera. Fortunately I have all the parts clean and ready to go. Alright I'll start here with the struts. I'll just give that a wipe with some uh, molybdenum paste on here, I think, on that shaft. Need very little of that indeed. And some on here where that's going to run on the shaft and the camera. That'll do nicely. Right, let's see about getting these struts into the camera body. To start with, I need to put the transfer shaft in. So I'll apply some synthetic grease to the gear on the end of that. And get that into position. On the 2A, it sort of tucks in behind the last fold of the bellows. But, uh, you need to lift that to get that in sometimes. There's a little bracket here that holds that shaft in place. That goes in at the top. I'll take some synthetic grease and apply it to the slots at the back of the struts. I don't bother putting it on the ones at the front because they'll only end up getting wiped off. To get this bracket on the wheel, well, there's the spring to go on there first. On our return spring for the shutter release, that goes on there. 
and we can give that a wipe on that shaft and with some molybdenum paste in the same way as before. This needs to go on there. And then I've got to get my struts in and over the bracket it holds that shaft at the top. Of course the bellows are trapped under it at the moment. Just looking to see if, how I've achieved, yeah it looks like I've achieved that. Just make sure these struts are clicked into the open position. And I can see the hole here that goes through the camera body, through the struts and into that little bracket. So I've got four black screws and typically the ugliest one goes under the leather at the base of the camera. Two pretty ones go into the film cassette well and the second ugliest one goes at the top. These are all in pretty good shape because they were loose. They didn't require any fight to uh, remove them. Let's get that one in place. You know, it's going to pick up. No. That bracket has moved. Let me check, see what's happened to it. It's drifted down that way. Pull it back. That appears to be the right place. No, that screw just won't pick up. Here we go, that's it. So at the base of the camera, in the same position that bracket is in the top, there's a little spacer that goes in at the bottom. So I'll just slide that down, lift that bracket slightly, to allow it to fall down into the space. Hopefully I've lined that up with the hole in the base of the camera. There it is there. And the ugliest of the four black screws goes in there. Because that's the one that's going to get hidden by the leather. And very likely will never be seen by another human ever again. Given that it's taken 70 years for this camera to be stripped down to this point. Okay, so that's run in. That's, so we've got our top and bottom screws in place. I'll just collapse those struts, open up the camera back, and there are two screws that go in here. If I get this camera to focus for once, probably not. Two screws go here and here. Yeah, about time it focused. Okay, I'll bet you won't see any of this, so I'll see if I can get those screws in position. One started. See if I can get its mate started. Yes. Okay. So we've got our four screws to hold the struts in position. So I can tighten those four screws up.
And that's our struts back in the camera body and all ready to go. No rattles, nice and clean. All the uh, grit and dust and dirty old dried grease now gone. And we can start assembling the focus mount next. <laughs>